been an interesting day in the world of dentistry and toothaches, so I'm glad to be here. So, uh, on behalf of the faculty, staff, volunteers, and supporters of Henry Madden Library, welcome, and welcome. I'm just glad to see such a great turnout today. We're really honored uh, to be a part of this celebration and this family reunion and community gathering. This wonderful exhibit that's lived with us for a long time now uh, represents what our library really does best. We are a place of learning and discovery collaboration and showcasing the excellence and scholarship in the Central Valley and what we have to offer. So our students in the local community now have an opportunity to learn more about its Chicano roots and the creative genius right here in the valley. Morales de Mitio is a beautiful remembrance of Daniel Gonzalez's life, his vision, and what this community meant to him and his family. He really left his mark. And we were honored when Phil and Vane came to us with this project to exhibit his work. I want to especially thank Phil Gonzalez and Bang Bang, respect here you are, uh, for bringing this idea and vision of this artistic celebration to the Henry Madden Library. A very special thanks to Barbara, who you met earlier, and Stephen Ruppel for all of the logistics, the event planning, and gallery setup. And a special th thanks to all of you for being a part of this special day. It really is special. And thank you again, Phil, for sharing such a special part of you with Fresno State and the greater Fresno community. So enjoy the afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm just so very honored uh, to have an opportunity to uh, introduce this uh, special event. Um, and I'm just so proud uh, to be part of this event. Uh, Mr. Phil Gonzalez was uh, my high school counselor. And so as I came to Fresno State and uh, saw him walking across the quad area, I said, what are you doing here? And he says, well, you know, I'm, I teach here. And so uh, just real pleased to have gotten a chance to get to know him. I have the honor of introducing to you Rena Gonzalez, who is a UC Riverside alumni, and she will speak on his behalf. I'm very honored to, to share these words. I am proud to have a copy of one of the iconic murals created by artist Danielle Chano Gonzalez in my office in the state capitol. As a student in the early 1970s, I spent many hours in the Chicano Student Programs office at UCR to view firsthand this iconic mural which inspired me. As a former ethnic studies teacher, I know how ethnic studies courses better engage and empower students as well as improve academic performance. All students can benefit from this holistic curriculum that will help them better understand the rich histories and cultures that make up the United States. The wall-length mural continues to inspire and be a focal point that brings students together on the University of Riverside's campus. Thank you very much for being here. <clears throat> it's, it's pretty meaningful when uh, a former student is in the position that she's in and is uh, you know, just great to work with. And uh, to have my daughter also working here on this campus, uh, not really sure could have planned that out any better. So I'm very, very thankful. I want to thank, um, first of all, a number of cousins that traveled some serious distance to get here to be here. And um, we have actually, a, we're going to have a family reunion going on later on today. Uh, family that really hasn't met each other, doesn't know each other, so uh, I'm sure that the Ochana is looking down on this and saying, okay, see, see what I did? Um, and, that, and that's a good thing, because he would do it with a big smile. And so, uh, in, in this whole project, um, one of the things that has been real key to me is to be inclusive of uh, Matthew's family. And so, with that said, um, I've been working uh, very closely with Greg, uh, John's son, and Greg lives in Bakersfield, and uh, we've been able to uh, develop a relationship where we're, we're talking uh, and, and still learning more about, about what all the things that his, uh, my theory that his father did. So uh, with that, I'd like to introduce Greg Gonzalez, and he's going to talk a little bit about his perspective of, it won't be uh, Morales de mi tío, it'll be uh, Morales de mi padre. Good afternoon. Uh, first off, I want to express my thanks to my cousin Philip Gonzalez, Fresno State, and everyone else who brought this together today. Growing up as a young boy, I spent a lot of time watching my dad do a lot of these murals that is displayed here today. It 
just kind of hanging out with my dad as his little helper. It was my job to unload all the paint, clean the brushes, and clean them with what I now know is turpentine. If you don't know what turpentine is, like paint thinner, uh, as a five or six or seven year old, um, that stayed in my memory for life. And it actually makes me smile when I, when I smell it today. I had no idea the magnitude of the work my dad had done in the community because I was such a small boy and the message of unity and hope he was attempting to portray. I have fond memories of listening to my dad talking to people because that's all he did. He wanted to talk and paint and eat, but not only about his artwork, but about life in general. My father wanted to help everyone, whether it was giving them a job, helping them paint, providing clothing or shelter, sometimes at the displeasure of my mom and the sacrifices of his own children. My father's main goal in life was really to help everybody. I have vivid memories of murals that were started but never completed and removed instantaneously because they were not received well in the community. Some of these were religious in nature and not necessarily in line with the community. Other, others were gang related, which I've learned through my experience were murals that clearly mark gang territory. At the time, I know now, my dad was trying to be the voice of the community. I lost my father at the age of 10, and it wasn't until I was in my mid-30s before I realized my dad's work has had an impact on my life, and now it's driven me and many others to continue his work with helping those who need a chance to succeed, and they need someone to be their voice. My, my family and I will be forever grateful for the work of my cousin Philip has done in memor memorializing his work. My father touched many lives, and I hope as you view the exhibit today, you can feel the message of each one of his drawings. That all of us will have a different impression. My hope would be that it gives you a vision of hope, unity, and passion for Chicano art. As you look at the display, I challenge you to imagine yourself not only in his work, but as an artist or community person, and let it touch you and drive you to those who you can be. In closing, I want to express my thanks again to Phil, Fresno State, but most importantly, one of the biggest pleasures I've had is meeting Kathy, and Kathy's been the biggest supporter to Phil, so I wanted to make sure he called her as well. Thank you. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Mr. Gonzalez. In um, doing this presentation, how this whole idea came about was um, on, on the morning that I got the phone call that my uh, deal had passed away. Um, obviously, I was very you know, taken aback and um, kind of in shock. And, and one of the first things that hit me was um, all, all of these murals that he had done. And I told my wife, I said, you know, um, I think I'm going to just take pictures of as many murals as I can find so that his kids will have the pictures. And really, when I started this out, that, that was my intent, was to, uh, later on, when, when these kids became adults, to say, here, these are the pictures that your dad did, and these are the murals that your dad did. And that, that was my only thought process. As I, I got more involved with that, one of the things that happened was, I was teaching Chicano Studies classes, and inevitably, we would talk about the murals and so forth, just generally in the Chicano movement, I would say, gee, you know, I have some murals that my Dio did. Uh, would you like to see them? Of course, the answer is yes. And so uh, I had them on a carousel slide projector, and so I, I showed them, you know, I brought in a whole carousel, and there's, you know, like 40 slides on a carousel. And I showed them like five pictures, and they said, well, well you know, do you have more? And well, they knew I had more, because I brought, they saw me bring in the carousel. I said, well, yeah, I have more, but we have other stuff to cover. Well, we, we want to see more murals. So, you know, you know, lose the class time on other subjects, but we'll, we'll cover this. So that would happen a couple of semesters in a row. And then another student said, well, you know, are you going to do an exhibit? And I'm looking at him like, what? You know, exhibit? What does that mean? Um, and unfortunately, I had a friend that worked at Artia Medicas. Her name is Nancy Watkins. She actually still volunteers there. And I took the slides to her and showed them to her. And she turned around, we were five minutes into the presentation, she goes, oh, Phil, when do you want to do an exhibit? Once again, what does that mean? Um, so at that point, I realized uh, that getting 
slides turned into pictures and matted and framed was now I understood the concept of starving artist because it's fairly expensive to do that. So we actually did a number of years ago a, a small exhibit at what what I was in the view at Arte Americas. So I guess what I found out most of all is um, in in doing uh, this work, one of the articles that I came across uh, was was this. Uh, particular quote, and when I read this, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, Theo embodied everything in, in this quote with the concept of culture and, and then the word goodness, the idea of, of goodness and barrio necessarily don't always go together, and a lot of times the barrio is referred to as a place where people try to get out of, uh, where people find it less desirable to live. Uh, but that's not how my view saw things. He, he saw kind of the good, the good part of stuff. So one of the things that I thought would be important to show, and, and Greg highlighted this when he spoke about what his dad would do and was always trying to do to help people. And one of the things that I think was very important to him um, was to help kids uh, realize that their culture, their heritage, and their neighborhood, all those things were important. And so here's a picture where he actually have, has a bunch of kids inclusive in painting, uh, which really was a three-sided mural. It, it was uh, in the back parking lot in Corona, California. And um, as you see this in the gallery, you get the full brilliance of this. Uh, but this, this was on the back of a two-story building of the Salvation Army building. This is such a beautiful mural. On a, first time I drove into this alley and I'm going, oh my gosh, why, is, why isn't this on the front of a building someplace or in the middle of a plaza? It was just an outstanding piece of artwork. And so by including the kids from the neighborhood, uh, the, the murals didn't get defaced. People, they wouldn't uh, put their black, what they call their placas or their names on them. They wouldn't throw graffiti on them. Uh, in fact, they kind of helped police them. And so it, it provided um, a, a number of things, but it really developed a sense of pride, I think, for a lot of uh, students that were involved in this. This next mural is actually a detail, and this was on uh, the side of what was a market at one point in Chino, California, and the market's gone. This is about two blocks from my tia's house, Tia Angie, uh, Chano's younger sister. And when, um, I remember going back a number of years ago, and uh, I told Kathy, I said, I'm gonna go check on the mural, and you know, I'll take a pictures of it. You know, and it was at night, but I said, I'll, I'll, call, I'll take pictures of it in the morning to see if there's any graffiti on it. And so we drove by the corner that I thought it was on. I'm going, you know, it was an empty lot. And I drove around again. And I said, no, this is the right corner. And so I go to my Diaz house. And, yeah, where's, where's the, oh, mijo, they knocked it down. Oh my gosh. So I'm, I'm so glad I took the pictures at that point. That, that made me realize how significant this, this was to do this. But this particular um, uh, detail of that mural shows the, the concept of mestizo, where you have the Spanish conquistador uh, with the indigenous woman and made the mestizo, which we, you know, some of us identify the term Chicano. But it, it, so, it does it so well um, that if you look at other muralists and other uh, murals, you won't quite see this particular identification. It, uh, it, it's very, very unique. And then when I originally saw the eagle, I thought, oh, that's the eagle from the Mexican flag. And uh, no, it's the eagle from the American flag. And there's a difference because the eagle from the Mexican flag is a serpent in its mouth. And so this doesn't. So, my, my Theo, he had this, this way of, of projecting and using symbols in an important way that I began to understand more as I looked at the murals in more detail, even after I'd taken pictures of them. This is the whole mural, and I, I remember telling, um, I remember my wife, I told her, I said, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go to 5 30 in the morning and I'm going to drive to Chino so I can get to this mural by 6 o'clock in the morning before there's any cars parked in front of it. Because I had gone there before and I tried to do that, and um, there was inevitably always a car to park here. So um, 
when uh, I began showing this to Chicano studies classes, I would say, okay, um, here's an example of a mural and so forth, and I'd say, uh, you know, you got a couple of minutes to look at it and ask any questions. Of course, they, you know, don't want to ask any questions. I said, okay, well, that's going to be your midterm exam is to explain that mural, and then I would turn it off real quick. <laughs> and they no, no, wait, wait, can you, can you put it back up? Can you put it back up? I said, no, you guys didn't have any questions, right? So you got it, right? So I, you know, we put it up and I, I would talk about it. But it really, again, we see a number of the uses of symbolism here. And um, if you're not familiar, in the very uh, far right-hand corner is uh, a portrait of Benito Juarez. And he was the first indigenous president of Mexico. He was uh, from Oaxaca. Um, he was Oaxaqueño. He spoke a couple of languages. And it's interesting because he had an uncle that kind of took him under his wing uh, and took him out of his village and allowed him an opportunity to get a formal education. He ended, ended up becoming a, a, a lawyer. And so he would end up becoming the president of Mexico. It's a really uh, unique story if you look at uh, Benito Juarez and, and his background. Uh, one of the other pretty persons that you see in there, and, and this is ironic, is uh, Miguel Hidalgo y Costilla. And he's the one that's holding the paper in his hand. And uh, he was a priest, and it's again, if you look at the background and so forth, uh, he had a mistress, and it was common knowledge. Uh, and so he was also the leader of the uh, independence movement away from Spain, and, and he was full blooded Spanish. And so, one of the ironic things that comes out of his quote is, uh, you know, dead to the Gachupin. Well, the Gachupins were pure blooded Spanish. So, there's some irony in terms of this symbolism. As you continue around the mural and you go to the, the far left and you see the Christ on the cross, and then you look at the one of the nails that you know is he's nailed to the cross with, um, you know it's got a message there in, in the way that the, the dollar sign is is represented, um, as well as um, the African American person that's presented in, in this particular uh, mural. A lot of students don't know who this is, and it's Malcolm X. And if you're not familiar, Malcolm X was an integral part of the, the black movement in the 1960s. Uh, he would change his name to Malcolm X from Malcolm Little. He thought Malcolm Little was his slave name, so he changed his name. So uh, with this one mural, you can do a tremendous amount of teaching, and uh, that's when I realized how powerful these things were in terms of being in a neighborhood and a student or a, someone that lived in the neighborhood would be exposed to this and, and certainly generate their creative thought process. This was part of that mural that had the, um, the Aztec sunstone. And uh, this is probably one of the un most unique um, uh, mural presentations I've ever seen or part of the mural. And the name of the mural is Raices de la Cultura Chicana, Roots of the Chicano Culture. And there's literally a root that runs through the whole mural. And um, as you see, it's a, a man, the representation of a man coming out of corn, maize. Well, corn was, a, a, as we know, very staple to the indigenous people of uh, Mesoamerica, uh, as well as Central and North America. And um, it was a central part of their diet. But uh, one of the things, again, I learned, and I learned this from Charlie Cerrantes, one of the people that used to paint with my tío, uh, and he says, um, you, know, you know, mijo, look at it. He used to call me mijo. I, our age difference wasn't that great, but I, I was a student at that point, so mijo means my son. And it was, it's in a very endearing term. But if you, if you look straight up the middle into the headdress, you're gonna see a, a yellow chili, and you'll see the initial CVL, uh, Corona Bato Locos, which is, if you translate it, crazy guys of Corona. It's kind of a way of identifying like dudes of Corona, right? And again, that mark in there uh, puts, puts the pride of Corona in it, and it keeps everybody's um, blackas off it from putting their graffiti on it. And again, learning process for, for me, because I, first of all, the first time I saw it, I didn't look at it, didn't see it. And um, as you point these things out, 
Um, the murals, again, take on a different meaning because now they have the identity of Corona, but they also have this un underlying respect and message, which is, again, reflective in terms of the goodness of the barrio. So um, I'm going to go on to a couple more. Uh, I, I labeled this one. I labeled this mural uh, One Nation Under God. The first time I saw this, I, the, that meaning of One Nation Under God got translated in my mind. And again, you'll see uh, what pre presumably is the image of uh, Jesus Christ to foot on the cross, and, uh, the nail having a, uh, you know, a, an emblem of a coin. Um, but I remember again, Charlie, when he took me to this, and he said, you know, Mijo, look at it. And I, again, I looked at it, and I'm looking, and I'm trying to see, but I obviously need some help. And he says, it, he told me in Spanish, mira el alambre. And I said, okay, well, mira el alambre means look at the wire. And so then I realized that the wire goes across the Mexican border. And again, some symbolism that's there that uh, an artist could put in. Um, and he says, yeah, he goes, look at, you know, all of these countries have been under different kinds of oppression. And that's what the wire represents. So uh, coming off of a rainbow into wire is, is a, a pretty unique way of u using some symbols there. So, and, and Greg will probably relate to this, but I said, well, okay. And I'm still looking and I'm trying not to ask dumb questions, right? So uh, I said, Charlie, uh, okay, so the lady with the guitar, help me out. He goes, come out and play while we were painting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she goes, yeah, you know, I said, Theo, so, well, let's, let's put her in. She's always here playing when we we're painting. So I don't know if you remember that, Greg, but uh, I said, oh, okay, you know, that's, that's pretty simple explanation. I can actually understand that one. <laughs> this particular building. Uh, it has the name of La Opinion, which means the opinion, and that was a paper that was uh, published uh, and it had different views than those of Mexico. Uh, Mexico is a very conservative country and La Opinion was printed, I believe, in Los Angeles and it had a different processing in terms of how they would present perspectives and certainly the news. So when we came to this particular mural, um, I knew who the painting was, but I'm thinking, okay, so the, the portrait part of this is uh, a person named Ricardo Flores Magón, and he, the Magón brothers, were became famous in Mexico because they wrote uh, contradictory to um, the dictator, president of Mexico, his name was Porfirio Diaz. He was uh, the president dictator of Mexico for almost 30 years. What is my going? Ricardo left and went to St. Louis and he began writing a paper called Regeneración, Regeneration. And it, it expressed the ideas of there being a democracy in Mexico and there be freedom of speech and, and other things like that we enjoy in the United States. I understood that pretty well. And when I first took this picture, it didn't process that I really should have cleared away the newspapers that are the trash underneath. <laughs> And uh, then I say, no, I think there's some irony there, the fact that newspapers were left there and I didn't bother to move them. Um, then we look at the rest of the mural, and um, I, I knew I, my deal pretty well. I, I got introduced to my deal, I think, when I was nine years old, and he came to, um, he came to our home, and of course I didn't know he was my deal. I, I had an, a variety of deals, but he, he wasn't on the list because he hadn't been around. And so um, he came to his brother, my dad, uh, for help in, in getting his feet on the ground and, and getting started with, with getting his life together and getting a job and maybe getting an education and so forth. So um, I, I, be, I became very close to him very, very quickly because we spent a lot of time together. My dad was trying to help him in a number of different ways. And so inevitably he was over at our house, but we were always doing things together because he would work with my other uncle who was a cement contractor. And um, me and my cousins were the gophers for the cement contractors. So we, we worked together. And so um, I thought I knew my deal pretty well. And I saw this particular picture and my deal is, is he has a gun in his hand. And I remember asking Charlie, Charlie, why does Theo have a gun in his hand? 
He goes, oh, oh, you know, don't you see? And okay, once again, he was, a lesson's coming. When he called me to be home, was like, a lesson's coming. And so um, he goes, we're, we're getting rid of the guns. Okay, that's this, getting rid of the guns. And he goes, no, our weapons are the pencil, the pan, and the brush. And again, I'm looking at that, and I'm going, oh, my gosh, you know, that's, like, way too obvious. <laughs> um, but again, I, I needed that help. So when I shared that with students, um, I said, yeah, I, 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 I was trying to process, and I was hung up on my deal holding a gun, not realizing that he was getting rid of it. So one of the symbols there is uh, he and Charlie and, a, and another person uh, that he painted with that was named uh, Arturo uh, Minijares, his nickname was Shadow, uh, and you know, my nickname for my deal was Chano, um, uh, and then Charlie was just Charlie. So uh, they kind of painted themselves, but in, in Calavera, in skeleton form, which is, I don't know, somewhat unique in terms of presenting yourself as self-image. So um, th this was this was a, a very interesting piece that, that I, I always been intrigued with. I, I have this picture I have hung in my office. When it's not hung in here, it's hung in my office at home because um, I, I remember that lesson very vividly from Charlie. Uh, this is the mural that you see as you enter the gallery. And um, there's a story, there's a couple of stories around this particular mural. And one of them is that um, I've always tried to be a good parent, both my wife and I. And so when your kids are going to go to college, you take them to different colleges and you, you know, go see the campus and you go on the tours and, um, you know, so parent, parents aren't supposed to ask any questions on the tours. That's only for the kids to ask questions. Parents can't ask. And I remember seeing this mural in a part of the UC Riverside campus. And I, and I remember interrupting the guide, right? And the guide, of course, this wasn't on the script for the guide. And I said, uh, can you tell me a little bit more about that mural? Oh, well, we're not going in that building. Okay, well, he didn't ask about the building, I asked about the mural. And so I said, but I said, and I guess kind of got cut off and like, you know, tour keeps going. So we go back to the quad area and one of the, the departments are there and they're you know, asking or answering questions for the parents and the prospective students. And, and one of my um, friends is a professor at UC Riverside, and I said, uh, you know, Professor Frigadola, tell me about that mural and over there in that building. He goes, oh, and he goes off. He goes, oh, that mural's made about John. And he started telling me all these things about it. And I look over at my daughter and I said, you know, I said, and he goes, what? I said, that's, that's her mom. Oh, and he goes over and gives her a big hug. And I said, okay, I know where she's going to school. <laughs> and so that, that, that's always a, a very important moment with that mural and my daughter and, and her decision, I think, to go to UC Riverside. So um, later on, the administration of UC Riverside would decide to move to this, this demolished part of this building. I'm not quite sure why. So the students kind of had a, an issue with that and uh, did some protest and I understood that they sat in on it and said, you're not, we're not leaving if, you know, until you, you know, preserve this. So they did preserve it. It's been moved now to Chicano Studies Program. It's right in the middle of the campus. And so this is really the first time that I had my picture taken with a mural. And that happened about a year ago. Um, and so, you know, I, I kind of, kind of ironic. I want to, I want to conclude here. I want to thank Dean Hornbuckle, Bay, for <clears throat> allowing us access. Access. It's, uh, it's very important to have access. And um, with that, creating that access allows me to. Um, share the message that my deal had for everybody and um, whenever I do this presentation for whatever group or students or classroom um, I always end with this because um, the way that I, that I see my family members um, 
and, and it, we're fortunate in our in our culture to be able to utilize an extended family member uh, in a lot of different ways. Sometimes we need them um, to, uh, to to listen to us. Sometimes we need them to lend us money. Sometimes we need us to to do other kinds of things or to just be together. And so my my deal was all these things, and he tried to be all these things to a lot of people. But uh, that message of um, what murals do and how they spread the message of our culture and uh, the goodness of the body. Once again, I, I can't express um, how thankful I am, truly. When I look out and to the people in my life that are here, all I can say is thank you. And uh, if you found some value and some enjoyment, then um, you know we need to look at my deal and say thank you to him because he, he truly was uh, a, a genius in a number of different ways. And, I think that's reflected in his art. So, gracias, thank you very much for um, being a part of Morales and Mitio. My name is Eddie Varela. It's really important that this kind of work and the legacy of muralism in particular uh, be kept for those of our community that are yet to come to, to universities. As a student from Samoa High, we never had any kind of discussion at all about Chicano history. It wasn't until my sophomore year at Reedley College that was probably the beginning of the Chicano movement back in those days, 67, that the whole notion of Chicanismo started to come into play. And what the heck did I know about it? Nothing, I was a green. 
So this kind of videos and a lot of document, uh, documentary kinds of projects that are unfolding in our community are really seminal points of, uh, of information that our students should have and should have access to. And that's why one of the questions that I pose is that how do we institutionalize this body of work for our community and other communities to take advantage of? Not only to have it accessible at the universities, but to have it online. In Chicano studies in particular, that these kinds of documentaries are shared with the students so that they become more aware of what it is, what, it, what the Chicano muralist, muralism is all about, and, and what it depicts and what it, and what it tries to convey to, to, the new, to the new students that are coming through the educational pipeline. Because this whole notion of diversity is, is one that our communities have struggled with in the past. If, if you look at our history as a community, you know, we've sort of been isolated. You know, Chicano communities tend to stay Chicano. African-American communities tend to stay in, in their own neighborhoods as well. And I think what this does is that symbolism is very important. If you see it, you know, that sort of legitimizes the, the outreach that all the cultures are, are starting to uh, have with one another. And it's really critical that we are family, you know, and family are, are in all shows all shades of colors and all shapes, right? So we need to learn to work with them, to reach out to them and, and be inclusive. So I really like this whole notion of, of muralists incorporating the various ethnicities in their artwork. Uh, one of the things that it brings to me is uh, a lot of smiles and happiness because, you know, through, uh, you know, now that I'm almost 50 years old, I've realized that, you know, his vision was to let everybody know that he was truly here to help people and he wanted people to be brought together. So the work that he did throughout the communities and over the years and throughout the state was, which, in my opinion, to bring everybody together from uh, different nationalities and didn't matter what race you're from, religion. Uh, or gang neighborhood. Um, he wanted everybody to be united, help each other, and to serve serve each other. Um, I believe he did that because he thought uh, there was a lot of racial divide. You know, him being you know in his mid 30s when he was doing a lot of this uh, artwork. You know, he died when he was 40, so he was you know his, his mid 30s when he was really at his prime. You know, 1975, 1976. Um, there was a lot of unrest in the nation at that time and racial divide going on and uh, one of his goals was to bring it together. Uh, I'm hoping that they, they kind of like I said earlier, give, give people some hope, some unity, and then you know start really um, taking a look at the Ch Chicano art, not just the work that my dad did as a Chicano artist, but other artists that are out there. So I'm hoping that others realize, wow, this is uh, uh, untouched ethnic you know, uh, talent or uh, resource out there that they probably don't even know very much about. Bueno, ha sido un placer poder uh, participar y atender y mirar una exhibición de una idea que se pudo haber hecho realidad. Uh, y aparte de eso, la conexión que tengo con el señor González, uh, su esposa de hecho fue pues una de mis maestras cuando iba a la secundaria, Fresno High, así que poder uh, escuchar su idea y mirar que se haga realidad es muy bueno y motivación para estudiantes. Esta exhibición definitivamente para la, la comunidad latina, uh, latinoamericana, mexicana, el poder ser orgulloso de sus raíces, de, de la cultura que ha estado establecido aquí en Estados, Estados Unidos, especialmente con el movimiento chicano en los años 60, y poder tener esa, esa visión y que siga actualizando en nuestros tiempos, especialmente ahora que es mucho de ser orgulloso de sus raíces y, y promo, no promocionar, pero sino um, educar a, a las más culturas. Que, eh, definitivamente los simbolismos que están representando en, en las pinturas, en, en la exhibición, definitivamente uh, el poder a unir todas las diferentes culturas, porque al final del día es exactamente eso, aprender de uno de los otros, aprender las culturas y poder uh, compartir esa, ese orgullo de, de cada quien de sus raíces.